It's a guy, a car, and a podcast. 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 Buckle up.
we've been trained to work on them. One of these days I'll pack my bags and I will walk away. Then you can kiss my ass goodbye. One of these days I'll make good on the promises that I've made. You see me again when I'm in the limelight. I'm headed out, never to return Say goodbye and blow up Cause the bridge is being burned Waiting for the last train out of town It never comes too soon If I don't escape right now I will go insane right now If I don't break away right now Then I'll be stuck with you Recording this or Facebook living this? I'm, I'm recording it. I'm gonna put it up as a YouTube yeah, yeah. episode of this thing. The funny thing is, you made that joke about the train, and then I, I started to play on words. I'm like, I bet you've actually been trained to work on train tracks. Is that accurate? Because of what you do, <laughs> it was like a quadruple on time. I don't even know what you call that. That was, that was meta. <laughs> I'm covering that. <clears throat> trained to work on the trains and then we had this job and we absolutely didn't need to be on the train tracks even a little bit and so then we're out locating some paint on the ground near the tracks and the city of phoenix police officer goes 
Uh, are you guys, you guys have training to be on the train tracks? You bet your ass we do. We absolutely went through that training just the other day. What we were doing was technically not correct. <laughs> <clears throat> but who cares? He's probably not watching. so I can smoke all that way. If I so choose, go Gophers! I've got my twin hat on, so it isn't totally weird for me to go, go Gophers! <laughs> Usually I'm wearing some random hat, they're like... Yeah, like, I was in San Francisco, I was in Vegas one time, and I had one of my San Francisco Giants hats on. Because I was like, Giants! And I'm like, yeah, yeah! Because I didn't want to explain it to some weird dude at the casino. Where are you from? Well, yeah, where? Yeah, right on. I grew up... Yeah. Minnesota. <laughs> I love it when people from Minnesota do that. We're also innocent, like, no shit. Um, I grew up down by Redwood Falls in a small town called Morgan. And uh, about two hours away. My folks are from Hector, but my folks live in Morgan. So there you go. Good. Sister in Waconia, sister in Marshall, brother in the wall. Yeah, we got them all surrounded. You can wear the hat with No, they're, yeah. They're up two to nothing right now, so. Yeah, two to nothing, I think. I was going to check that in just a moment. Glad I wasn't swearing with all the kids walking by. <laughs> um, yeah, let me check the score, because I'm curious. No, oh, no, they tied it up two to two. Yep, they got a two-run homer in the top of the seventh. Bummer. We'll just have to walk them off and crush their souls. Have a good night. Here. I don't think anybody walks by with a
I think I'll try heroin for a while But it's just an experiment I think that heroin may make me smile I like that there's an iPad right there so I can watch the most beautiful person in the world play guitar for me. I think I'll try cocaine for a bit. Oh, but it's just an experiment. I think the cocaine would be the shit. So brilliant, I don't know if the drugs will kill me. I don't care, I'll destroy my family. I was gonna sing it with the cigar in my mouth, and then I remembered you had used this later. <laughs> Boy, taste like crap. I hear you, Ross. I'm starting to sound like my brother. I think I'll try LSD for a dad oh, But it's just an experiment I think the LSD won't be so bad Oh, I'm so brilliant I don't know If the drugs will kill me I don't care I'll destroy my family I Thank you. So good. So good. Oh man. Yeah, I was really gonna sing with it in, the, in my in the, my own house. Gonna stick up the mic. You can always clean it later. Mm -hmm. I know how. Ah. Clean things. Practice. Smack. <laughs> Set list. Smack list. <laughs> Everybody's looking at you now. Look what you've done at 21. It's take your daughter to work night at the strip club. Every night of the week, you're just looking bleak. Let's get in dimmer. You can see your life is over now. Pregnant stripper. Washed up stripper. Ankles up, heels too. That's your ass, and I can't see your pussy too. Over now, 
all pregnant Stripper Washed up Stripper Look what you've done Act what you want I like that one. I watched you almost lose your nerve. You went for the chorus and that old thing was walking by. And it's like... I was making sure it wasn't a nun or something. <laughs> like, look what you've done. Let's take your daughter to work night as a third grade teacher. Every night of the week. What? That doesn't make any sense. But my song makes total sense, right? <laughs> There's a new one. It's called I Hope You Had a Good Time. You hate my guts You're beautiful but I am so ugly Is this the end My stupid friend I love you so but you are so over me As I drop off this bridge I hope I'm not Gonna live to regret this I hope you had A good time I hope it was Everything you wish it would be So if you Let's just pretend I don't know you And you don't know me <laughs> You think I'm sick I'm such a prick I'm an idiot And you are so done with me if in the end we can't be friends I understand and I'll be the death of me As I jump off this bridge I'm sure I'm not gonna live to regret this I hope you had a good time I hope it was everything you wish it would be So if you see me next time Let's just pretend I jump off this bridge I know I'm not gonna live to regret this I hope you had a good time I hope it was everything you wish it would be So if you see me next time Let's just pretend I don't know you And you don't know me And you don't know about as high as I like to play anything. <laughs> uh, you know, there's water here for me. Adam bought, brought me a bottle of refresh, refresh water.
It's probably a little warm right about now. That's, so. a, that's okay. It'll be. I'll just pretend I'm drinking urine. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put it to your lips. Stinking refreshments on the way. How long do you want me to play for? Considering the circumstances, I don't really care. I'll do two more and then you should play full of it. Tits. 
and you could touch mine. Can't see about me. Oh yeah, come over. When you're tripping on acid, you're breaking a far. You'll start to forget things or repeat things you say. You'll start to forget things or repeat things you say. Bag of weed is all we need and everything will be just fine. I'll touch your chest and you can touch mine. This song is just a joke, so get off your high horse. I don't drop acid, shrooms are better, of course. All you have to do is ignore the shit I've said. Let it pass in one ear and out the other, it right straight through your head. Because that weed is always. I'll touch your tits and you can touch mine And you can touch mine And you can touch Adam's ass Oh yeah! And you can touch mine <laughs> <laughs> With the way I've started to do this it's stupid that I even use the phone anymore because what I, my original intention was I was going to use the audio track from the phone since it's a little closer and I was going to like use it as the audio for this. But for some stupid reason, these are made by the same company. I guess the internal app is different. There's like the video app and there's the voice recorder app and they're not paced the same. Like this recording will start to go fall out of sync with that video like 20, 30 seconds in and I'm like... Kidding me? <laughs> it's the same equipment. Why is this? So now I just that, that audio is that. What did you see? What it was like? <laughs> you convinced me too. I thought you were with me. It's and a you're like, movie all of a sudden. You're like, I, I don't, I don't have a podcast, and there's a reason for that because I don't. I don't speak. The I don't know how this works. You should. We'll see. Here's the final thing. Yeah. I want to talk about that. I want to talk. Daily thoughts with Ross. <laughs> I'll produce it. I'll, if you just record it on your phone. Email me the thing. I'll glue it together. I'll make you like a little theme song. I'll pay the the fee to have it like on a website. I will produce a podcast just to get your voice out there. It'll be, like, be so fun. It'll be like therapy for me. I'm just, yes. I'm gonna just sit there. And Mine is very cathartic. Yeah, talk to nobody. <laughs> talk to nobody and talk to nobody at the same time. <laughs> It does get weird after a while when, like, because I start my show every week with, like, oh, Capper's my Capper. Sometimes I'm just like, I have nothing to say. Why did I start, why did I start recording? And then I'm just dumb. Then I'm dumb for a good three minutes before I stumble on something interesting and then right. just start peeling the onion. I had to just start talking about hats and baseball and people be like, this is dumb. So, I don't know. We'll see. Now, this interests me because as I was playing over there, I went to go start playing Big Plastic Trees. And you lost your mind about something over here. And I can only assume, because of the conversation you had with Minnesota guy, that it's about a game. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, like, betting, or is it just pure fanship? Pure fanship. I don't, I don't really... I mean, I, I mean, I gamble, but I don't bet on sports. Um, yeah. I just... I, the Twins, you were, like, mad! Yeah. Do you go to the games and stuff when they come out here? Yeah. But they only come here, like, every six years. And it's been, oh, we're not in the same... No. Is that what they call it? Because it's the league, and then there's internal divisions. There's major league divisions. baseball, and then there's American League and National League. Twins and then they don't call American these? League, okay. and then the yeah. Diamondbacks are National <laughs> So the Twins loaded the bases in the ninth, down one and down one to the A's, with one out, and all we had to do was get a game base hit, we won the game, probably. Um, a sacrifice fly would have tied the game, and 
Mitch Garver get into a goddamn double play. <laughs> so I was like, oh, a top lot. of my lungs. A lot, yeah. <laughs> really. There's nobody else here. It's just us. I'm going to smile at the camera. I'll make it really awkward. That's one of the reasons I left the table up. It's like, it's going to make me laugh if we get tips for just sitting out here, like, looking like we're doing something important, which we are. Yeah, most Sorry. of the people are going to stare. Yeah, they're like, this is weird. Or Eddie's going to pop back in and be like, what's up, guys? I'm like, oh, nothing. Just Eddie, one of the guys you met a minute ago? Oh, Eddie, The yeah, shorter yeah, yeah, of the yeah, two? Yeah. I was thinking of Daryl, the homeless looking fellow. Who I don't, is that his name? Good. He tipped you a dollar. Oh, the guy with the gray hair? Yeah. I've never met him in my life. Yeah. Okay, I don't he know. He tipped a dollar. I'm like, I felt like giving him like five for tipping us one. The year I've been doing this, that happens probably like 30% of the time. It's crazy. I'll be playing. And like, usually it's not a dollar. Usually yeah, yeah. it's like, they'll just reach in their pocket, pull out, and just dump. <laughs> and most of the time it's change. Yeah. And good on them. One time, I, a guy's keys... Oops. Like, I kept bringing them back every week and leaving them out. Nobody kept taking them. So, at one point, I think I just put them on top of the magazine thing over there. I'm like, it's not my problem yeah, anymore. Right. I didn't, whatever. I'm washing my hands with these <laughs> dirty ass. But all the time. And Eddie's talking about that, too. He's like, what's with these home? I'm like, I... In the same sense that people who have the money to give are trying to compliment what I'm doing or thank me for just entertaining them while they were eating, it's a compliment whether they can... like. Whether they can afford it or not is my business. Right. They're trying to like send me a message, so it, it makes right. me feel good about what I do. Yeah. And there's been just bizarre, like this, I was playing um, One Headlight by the Wallflowers, yeah. and this lady walks up behind me, like right over there, and is just in tears. Really? And says within earshot of me mid-song, I really needed this. And she sits down right there for the rest of the song, and is just bawling. Awesome. And I'm over there just like close my eyes. I just get into that song. And I'm like, I, I need to get this lady the best. Oh, I thought I it was like, her. you're going to cry and I'm going to cry. I mean, kind of, I, it was no. emotional. Like, yeah. I, it was like, it was that goosebumps feeling where you're just on fire. Right. But weirdly, I think I've gotten past the point as a, as a performer where I get moved to tears. I think I get moved by things, but for some weird reason, my headspace as a performer just doesn't. I don't get choked up yeah. singing, even if I know somebody else is really feeling something. Unless I, if I get choked up if I'm feeling it. If somebody else is feeling it, I just feel the vibe of their emotions about it, yeah. and it enriches the experience. But I don't cry in like movies. And, I don't, I, by myself singing, I guess in the car. Just I in the shower. I, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever cried in the shower? I don't. I, it's not a place that I can think that I. Would cry. I don't think so. I think I'm just the shower for me, and this is probably so weird is such a performance place in the sense that, like, I don't get in there for fun. I'm not, like, a bath kind of guy. Like, I, there's, I'm in there for a reason. So I'm, like, in this autistic routine of cleaning myself. And when I'm done, I'm done. I just get out. I don't, like, when I was a teenager, I would enjoy the hot water for a, a few minutes because it's, like, 5 in the morning. I got to go to school or something. But I'm just so routinous about it that I wouldn't even think to have a boat. And I listen to music nowadays in my get out of bed routine and throw it out. Oh, like, I like going to the shower. I'm watching, I, I put my, I put the baseball game on on the lip outside the shower so I can watch the baseball game. Do you, I've, I guess I've been to your house and I've seen you like with the sports channels, do, are, do they have like packages that you subscribe to yeah. for yeah. that? Yeah, and you do? the MLB extra innings one. Not sure. the not the DirecTV one, but like MLB TV. Uh-huh. So I can watch it on my phone. I can watch it on my own. Is it like a FOMO thing with you at this point where you're just so in that you don't want to miss anything? Or do you actually just enjoy I the just rhythm enjoy of watching. the game, yeah. The, yeah. the fan shots? Well, yeah. the, I, I just enjoy um, I just enjoy watching these. Like, I'm just a big Twins fan. I can watch any sport really, but I prefer Twins. Is it weird to me that... Is it weird to you that I have a hard time putting baseball fanage and fanage of punk rock in the same emotional arena. It seems like they're just different paces of feelings and, yeah. you know, baseball isn't like angst and heartbreak and all those things that punk rock is like thrashing out right, of your face. I, that, I mean, I'm a big football fan too, but if I were that big of a football fan, I'd have to play in a metal band. Greedy ground possession game. In your face. Ugh. I've heard you write some, some pretty metal stuff. No. I played my country song, Michael. That was fun. Yeah. Um, no, I, it, 
it's just it's just based on where I grew up, really. Just the son of a coach. And, oh, does he still? Oh, he's retired. He's retired nine years now. Retired. I would think that's the time when it really pit. You just start like volunteering at little leagues or something like that to retire, just for fun. Like, to coach. No. No, my dad. Yes. No, no. Like I remember, I asked him when I was in about seventh grade if he was going to keep coaching after. If he was going to keep teaching, so he could keep coaching. And my dad, who like never swears, like fuck no. They don't pay me enough to do that. Like, <laughs> but he won over over 400 games Jeez. as a coach with like I'm like 6'4 I was like probably like the 5th well maybe now about the 10th tallest guy we ever played for uh-huh. a bunch of average sized white kids from southwestern Minnesota but one guy who was 6'11 and then I know like a few guys got taller and went up I mean for the most part everyone was like 6'1 yeah you know it's just not that big. Um, but I mean, he, he coached for 33 years, 33, 4, 34. So that 400 wins, like, is there a way that you can compare that to major league streaks of, like, other coaches that you might be aware of to, like, say how awesome that actually is? It, no, it, it would kind of be like, kind of be like if, uh, well, really what it is, it, it's really underappreciated because you're out in the middle of nowhere. Where we grew up. It's not close to Minneapolis, it's two hours from Minneapolis. So, like, people there, people in the area knew my dad. People in the area knew me just because my dad was a coach. And, like, the other towns that we played with regularity, like, they knew me and they would talk shit to me all the time because, oh, yeah, that's the coach's kid. Like, and then, and then as I got a little older, I calmed down a little bit. We got a little less pick on Ross and more, you know, uh, I don't even know, camaraderie, a little bit of camaraderie, oh, a okay. little more fun, more yeah. fun. When I was young, it was like, eh, fuck you, Clover, piece of shit. Like, I'm like, I don't even do anything. I mean, I was a dick, I don't know, a little asshole, but, um, <laughs> but, but then, like, when I got older. When you say two hours out of Minneapolis, I think of it in Phoenix terms, and I think either Flagstaff or Tucson. Like, is it that, does, does it compare nope. to either of those places? It's, it's nope. more like, Pine top, or it's more just like a really small yeah. kind of place. Yeah, okay. it's, it's all flat getting there. You just drive through all the cornfields. And is that where the, the, the nation's the, corn is growing? Yeah, is sugar beets. Those? Sugar beets. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, yeah. No, it's really it's not the same as from Minneapolis to Chicago. That would be like flights. But you drove a lot as a kid because you would have to drive at least an hour to get anywhere. I had to drive, no, I had to drive 30 minutes just to see a relative. We wouldn't even have, you know, everybody lived in Hector. Was your house literally just in the middle of nothing? No, we lived in town. Yeah, we lived, we lived, we lived on 2nd Street and then we moved two blocks away and we were on 3rd Street. And then there is a 4th Street but there's no 5th. Weird, right? So good. My hometown would fit so we're at Maine, right? So we're at Maine and Center. We're basically in the middle of a square mile. Yeah. My town would fit University Broadway, Arizona Mesa. There, That's incredible. Yeah, it would fit. It's a square mile. It's and I mean, did that area have enough? Like a pizza shop and a convenience store yep. and a clothing no. store? <laughs> and a gas station, yeah. It had pizza in it. You know, when it... But, was it, was it good? It was hot stuff. Pizza was okay at the time. We didn't really know much better. The only other option was Pizza Hut 13 miles away. Jeez. So we had you on here before, and we went through your, your whole musical history. Yeah. The purpose for having you on today, and the great musical performance that they're going to catch, because that's going to be the first part of this the worst whole performance I've done. So, the, I mean, the truth is, I recorded the first one, didn't record his second set. It was better. So Except You just have to come see him. On August 9th August to see 8th, all the good shit. Days. But the reason that you're here is to talk about the new record. So, yep. talk, my friend. Where did this thing even come from? For Idiot Kin, being a band that hasn't done a record in eight years, fourteen, years. fourteen years. Yeah. So I mean, we're gonna re- we're gonna release it as Idiot Kin, but this record is all my stuff. Um, there was no collaboration with Reese or Schmitter or Luther, and that's all because. Of 
speed bump of like psychologically speaking where you just maybe don't get tired of the person but you just feel like you need something new and so a lot of people start to sabotage and self-sabotage and all this crap but I'm, I'm curious if part of the reason that these songs came out was because you'd like rediscover her for your relationship or was there some like romantic something that got it out of you or um. Well, dealing with problems that are my fault, and my my problems to deal with, um, made me refocus. Okay. Um, I think we talked about that a little on the last We've discussed episode. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She knows what I'm talking for about. For sure, for sure. And, um, and so... So like a deeper appreciation for her and gratitude for yeah, her. Yeah, just not being that. a dumbass, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, Epic. Robin's awesome. And and so the reason that the songs finally came out, my biggest problem with, like, back when we were playing a lot, people would say that we were, like, 182 or because we were three white guys and <laughs> t-shirts and jeans. I'm like, well, we're not really doing that. And the thing with Blink is, primarily, at the time, their songs were all love songs yeah. disguised as punk songs. Yeah. And, and found it hard to like write really cushy I love you so much kind of songs yeah. and so I was always kind of searching for a way to write smarter songs than that, songs that say it more cleverly without coming right out and saying it and, and, and so then because I found the way I wanted to say it Talked about underground garage on the first time we did this. 
and so I listen to like, like, all these kind of. I feel like I could listen to you talk about underground music for hours. Just the yeah. the band yeah. names and to have you like to have you and me in a room where you have access to your phone and like some sort of like Bluetooth speaker and just you just go oh check this out oh listen to this oh hey have you ever heard of these guys I'm like no not even a little bit like just the yeah the like the what do you call that the, the vortex of the underground knowledge is crazy yeah I mean it's assisted a lot by the underground garage but I mean like they just play some of the coolest meaning like a series radio or yeah, yeah. oh really Channel 21 on series oh. yeah do you do you listen to uh, Howard as a result of that? Or are you one of the only people that's like, no, no, I'm a customer that has nothing to do with it? No, I, I listen to, I mean, I see Channel 21 all the time. Because they just play neat old stuff and stuff, or new stuff. Like, have you heard of the band Death by Longa Bunga? No. Oh, yeah. They're Norwegian, I think. Uh, it's so good. Uh, they have a song called Into the Night, which is kind of like a one of their album tracks for their most recent record and then the other one is called um, Haunt Me and it's a whole song about um, it's a whole song about uh, what's her name the little the Billy Beauty pageant um, uh, Honey Honey Boo Boo Honey Boo Boo yeah. <laughs> it's all about Honey Boo Boo and it's like there's nothing wrong like I, like she's not on TV and I wish she would come back just to haunt me it's so, it's so funny <laughs> Yeah. I feel like that's that is a good that did this moment is a good example of how just oversaturated media has gotten because Honey Boo Boo was huge and hasn't been off the air for more than a couple of years right. and like you 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 said white dress beauty queen which is the best way to describe her and I got nothing like there was no I'm like yeah. who could you, you possibly think be thinking me. about it was so you did say it but it's true like that. That got, has been washed out of my head yeah. so thoroughly by how much great that it's still coming. Things are just pouring in all the time, and maybe that's like a good thing because you know cream rises to the surface. Like the good stuff right. is going to stay with us and make an indelible, you know, emotional impression. Right. Like I just rewatched Chef, that John Favreau movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm sure it's great. Oh, yeah. so good. Anything that was in it is probably pretty good. I don't know. About that. I need to go back and rewatch like Made. Yeah. Um, replacements, the football movie. Is it the Adam Sandler? No, no, the, the Keanu Reeves. Oh, yes, that's, that's right. You're right. <laughs> it's, it's horrible, but it's awesome. Um, it's one of those movies, every time it's on, I just have to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like if, with rare exceptions, if the movie would come on TBS frequently, I probably don't ever want to watch it again. Right. I'm done and over it. And that's probably one of those. Can you watch the Shawshank Redemption every time it's on? Yeah. I can watch it most of the time. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say what to Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just, I was just listening to, I guess, I was not kind of podcast, so I feel like most of the references and things that I heard probably come from that, but somebody was saying that they were getting in an argument with somebody because they felt like Shawshank Redemption should have ended with Red on the bus. Like, don't take us all the way to Save Watanejo. Don't do the whole pull out from the ocean, all that. I'm like, but that's so emotional. To yeah. see that he got there, to see Andy, like, sort of already evolved. Like, his hair is shorter, and he's wearing that goofy shirt, and he's, like, working on the boat and stuff. Right. That has emotional resonance, and yet she's like, no, no, no. We're like, fade to black and roll credits on Red and the bus. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can see it, but, yeah, you, you want to... You want to end on I Hope? Right. It's such a great yeah. line, like... It would be a Hallmark movie to end it there. Right. It's almost too sweet. You kind of got to, like... Right. Actually finish yeah, it Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. It would be... Are there any other movies maybe that way? Just cut off the ending. <laughs> <laughs> Forrest Gump cut off the uh, Forrest talking to Jenny's grave scene. <laughs> no, did no, I see, want that. Did you ever see that meme where it was Forrest and Jenny? It said my, my last relationship was like Forrest Gump. I was retarded and she was a whore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um... Uh, yeah, it's no, such a like, clever joke I it's a great sorry. joke. It's I wish I had thought of it. <laughs> Back to the Future just stops when Marty's car won't start in 1955. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I need to rewatch that. Lone Pine Mall. Watch for that next time you see it. What is. So they're at the Twin Pines Mall, 
in Minnesota? No, 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 no. So at the beginning of Back to the Future, yes, they're at the Twin Pines Mall. Yes, and the Doc does this whole video yep. thing. Marty goes into the future. So yeah. Easter egg at the end of the movie. Oh, okay. Marty goes to 1955, All crashes into Old Man Peabody's barn. Yeah. And when he gets it fired up, he runs over one of the trees, and then Mr. Peabody shoots the mailbox. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Goes all the way back, gets back to 1985, crashes into the theater. Yeah. Runs back to the mall, and when he's running up to the mall to watch him dock, blah, 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 the sign is Lone Pine Mall because he <laughs> murdered one of the trees back in 1955 when he took off out of the barn. That's the Easter egg at the end. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's really, really smart. Is that whole movie that great? Like, were they just that smart about making it? Yeah. They're like, let's make sure we're, we're consistent about yeah. the message. Well, like, in 1985, it's like, blah, 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 re-elect Mayor Goldie Wilson. And then in 1955, he's like, I'm going to make something out of myself. And he's like, that's right, you're going to be mayor. <laughs> Mayor, and then he's like, "Yeah, colored mayor. That'll be the day." And it's like, "Well, they already tied that in." And so, yeah. You know, and it's all like really quick. And you know what? You're a guy I should have this conversation with. I got recently on this kick where I was looking for film, and I guess even television, but mostly film scores, like film music that means something to me. Like I have this whole playlist on Spotify, and it's got like the the tail end of E.T., like the uh-huh. where they're getting chased by the cops, and then the that whole thing, and then when the spaceship takes off, I've got that one, I've got Jurassic Park, I've got uh, Hans Zimmer, actually, I mean, as much as The Lone Ranger wasn't, like, a great movie, his version of the William Tell Overture is out of control, so I've got that one on there, I've got Alan Silvestri from Forrest Gump, the whole thing, um, I don't know, like, Man from Snowy River, Delta Force, like, some really interesting theme songs that just mean something to me. I'm curious, like, do you have memories of certain like film scores that you're like dude that, that'll get me all amped up to run the battle or whatever um uh more of the more of the more of the movies that had like the popular music in them scores sometimes uh, like Star Wars and just kind of the, the obvious I've never seen Star Wars we've talked about this never mind my bad uh like I can't think of this never seen it's, uh, wow yeah what movies would you have seen that have like an amazing score um uh, some of the obvious that I just mentioned, like Jurassic Park, got that yeah. weird, all that crap. Um, uh, but so, but yeah, I will tell you, like even like a sports movie like Hoosiers has like really good music. Well, it's, it's I need to rewatch it. It's been a long time. Uh, my mom grew up in Indiana, so uh, like <laughs> yeah, Hoosiers like has a weird We're connection to my world. Fence. <laughs> it's just, it's so goddamn good. Um, we should talk about sports movies for the next half an hour, just like because there's like. I mean, Hoosiers, Rudy, uh, The Natural, Field of Dreams, uh, Moneyball, uh, Major League. <laughs> I love that you go to, like, the off the silly beat one. comedy. Yeah, like the, like the silly ones. Yeah. But, yeah. League of Their Own. I don't know. There's so many, like, good sports movies. Mr. What? I can't ever think. The Program. Oh, it's a football God. movie. Where, yeah, have you seen it? Where they lay down in the middle of the traffic, <laughs> and they had to ban that part of the movie, and they like took it out because <laughs> dipshits were actually reenacting it. Like that seems like a real fucking solid idea. Let's go out in the middle, middle of the highway and just lay down. <laughs> if you do, if you do that, you deserve to die. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, no, I, I remember seeing the program. I I don't watch nearly as many movies as I used to. I, I, I watched a lot like through college or whatever, and you get like free passes to go see this, that, and the other thing. But, you know, then once I started having kids, I started watching kids' movies, and then then when my kids got old enough, my, my father-in-law takes them to all the movies, so I don't, I don't go to the movies. Like, it's just not... Was there any of those kids' movies that, like, jumped down to, or you're like, oh, wow, that was actually good? Really awful? Yes, there were a few of those. Shark Tale. Um, no, I, like, I don't know. Like, I'll tell you what, the Lego movie is, like, supposed to be so goddamn fabulous. <laughs> We watched that in the movie theater, and I got about 30 minutes in it, and I passed out. <laughs> I was like, I'm done. And then, when it came out on DVD, they showed it at the church, like in the old, like in the old room with the two big screens and like the carpet floor. Okay. And we're sitting there as a family, <laughs> watching it. 
were going to sing Goddamn Point and passed out. I was like, well, clearly I'm not meant to see this movie. I heard, like, everything is awesome! And I passed out. I mean, has anybody even told you how it ends? No. So at least you have that, like, emotional... No. No, I have no idea. No. Alright, we're doing this then. Spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen the Lego movie. We're falling asleep to it twice. The whole movie's obviously, like, you know, stop motion, just yeah. action figures. I want to say it's, like, ten minutes before the movie ends or something like that. You, like, pull out... And, and you meet the kid who's been who has been the entire movie he's been playing a game with Legos oh. that's been the entire movie and uh, there's some reason there's some like plot reason why pulling out at that moment is uh, powerful and then his dad comes downstairs and it's Will Ferrell oh. and they have like this really fun like father son moment of him just being like what are you doing buddy and he's just like oh I'm just playing with Legos and it's kind of like, like at the end of Toy Story 3 there's this moment where, like, Andy, who's the, been the owner of the, kid, the toys the whole time, he's going off to college. Yeah. And he, as he's driving to college, he's got his box with his toys, and he's like, well, I'm not going to take these to college with me. And he's just like, what should I do? And they just happen to be driving by this house with this little girl playing in the front yard of her house. And he just pulls over his car, and he gets out, and he introduces himself to this girl. And he's like, hey, I don't know if you're interested, but I got these toys. And he introduces her one by one to all of his toys and like it's just it's like an ugly cry moment but Lego movies kind of like that where like it, it it connects it's almost like the whole movie's just been fun for kids and it's like when you bring an adult into it and where the dad kneels down and he starts to like play with toys too right. it's like oh no we all still like imagine like this we all enjoy to play around in our brains like this so right. I feel like that's kind of the point of the Lego movie is like <laughs> We all think silly things like this. That's very sweet. Adults made this movie. <laughs> like, we're, yeah. we're... We like to play in that world of kid... Kiddery. Right. Yeah. So, so. No, I don't have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess fast forward. You should. I feel like you should be seeing the end scene. Just be like, oh, we're wrapping it up. But that's, I guess, what fascinates me about you as an emotional creature. Is you just don't really seem to, like, need emotional art or narrative structure or like plot closure like you don't you don't need you're, you're just I guess it comes down to our text message conversation the other day you're just like I need to drop my phone I don't need <laughs> much well, yeah just I guess that's a little weird I mean the, the funny thing is I'm a pretty emotional person like so go back to the sports for uh 95 uh, the Mariners are playing New York, right? In the Kingdome, in Seattle. And it's like, I mean, it's hard as shit to beat New York at that time. They were just about to start their run, where they have won four and five years right after that. And, and they got Ricky's on first, I think. And Ricky Tuvey's on first. And keep in mind, I fucking hate the Yankees. And I'm indifferent towards Seattle, but I kind of like, I like them, I like the area, I like the city, so I'm kind of like, ah, Seattle's fine. Except if the Twins are playing them. Screw them. <laughs> so I think Griffey's on first, and Guy Rockets a double into the corner, and Griffey's off at the crack of the bat, there might be two outs, I don't even remember. And, and he runs his ass off. And he, like, <laughs> the relay's coming, and he's coming in from third, and it's like, there's no... <laughs> and so I know how it ends. I've seen it a million times. If I see a replay of that, I will watch Ken Griffey ground third base. I'm like, there's no way. And I know he's going to score. <laughs> and then he scores, and I will, I will roll up. I will tear up at just the sheer and utter joy of it all. You know, like that's super cool to me. Um, wow. Uh, <clears throat> game six of the '91 World Series when Kirby Puckett did the walkout home run. And Jack, Joe Buck, or Jack Buck, is like, um, he's like, Hug him up, you know, to the deep to left. And he goes out, and he's like, we'll see you tomorrow night. And I <laughs> get goosebumps just doing it now. <laughs> and, and, then, and then in, was it like 2012, the Cardinals and the Rangers were playing. And <clears throat> David Fries is up for the Cardinals. And it's the, it's the 10th. It's the 10th. And, and I turn to Robin and I go, 
if he hits a walk-off home run here and Joe Buck says, his kid, who's doing the World Series now, if his kid goes, and we'll see you tomorrow night, I will shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and Breeze hits it deep to center, and it's going, and Joe Buck goes, and we'll see you tomorrow night. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I turn around, but I guess I have to shit my pants now. <laughs> she didn't get involved into it. But, yeah, like, so, like, that's... So that's why I like this person. So, if I am an emotional person, um, I don't, I don't, uh, like I, I call my grandma, um, my, grandma, my dad's mom, I call my grandma on uh, her birthday, and then two days later on the anniversary of her husband's death, my grandma, and then I call her on my grandpa's birthday, and I call her on their wedding anniversary, just to let her know I'm thinking about her. Um, I call my grandma, I call my mom's mom, I'm pretty good about calling her on like the, the day after St. Patrick's Day, that's the day my grandpa died, and then late in March, is, or late in May, his birthday, um, and then their anniversary is in August, so I talk to that grandma more frequently, um, but yeah, I call my grandma Joe, and like, so the one year, so this is years after grandpa had died, and it was like the day after his birthday, or maybe two days after, and I not called because it was on a weekend and I just didn't realize what day it was or whatever. <laughs> my grandma says to my dad, her son, you know, I'll be here for class. And he's like, uh, yeah, I talked to him the other day. I, you know, he's, so he's okay. And my dad's like, yeah, he's just fine. And, and she goes, well, he good. He didn't call me the other day on, on your dad's birthday. And she was like super upset. She thought I had like I don't, she thought I was like in a car accident or something. Yeah. I don't know. She, she was concerned that I hadn't called her. So yeah, I, I call her. So like I, I tend to remember those things. It's kind of creepy and weird sometimes, but I remember that days. I don't think it's creepy or weird. I, I do. I'm fascinated by how it seems to me that your love for baseball is tied pretty directly to your dad and his influence in your life, and then you've got this really this need, this emotional need to kind of like be with certain family members at certain times that are significant or really hard for them or whatever. Yeah. So like, you're just like tied to your family in a way that I don't, maybe that's that's why I love films, that's why I love music, that's why I put my heart in these things, because my family, they don't have my heart in that way. Like, right. there's a lot of, there's resentment and there's miscommunication well, there's I, all sorts of stuff and I hope I don't like ever make it more difficult for them but my grandma like, she thanks me when I'm talking to her when I call her on those days yeah. I mean like sincere things not like thanks for calling she's just like you know she really appreciates it but you know it's kind of goofy but like every March 4th I I text my mom and I say happy you're still around you know because she always had a car accident and I I'm like happy you're still here and she's like me too you know, I'm going to keep it pretty simple, you know. Um, You're just simple people. Mm-hmm. But it's a beautiful thing, and I I can't find a foothold to, right. like, relate to it and understand you well enough to just not be mystified by you. Well, most people probably think I'm a big enough asshole that I would never do anything like that, but I know better. And I, and I just try and... I just want them to know that I'm thinking about them. You know, I think about my grandpa every day. I mean, he's been dead. 22 years, but I think about Grandpa Ron every day. Like, he was he was 63. My dad's 65. You know, my mom almost died in her car accident when she was 40. I'm 41. It's like, wow. so you, you think about the weird things. Like, so I think about this. When my mom had her accident, I was, um, I was 17. And she was 40. So being 17, 40 seemed pretty old. And then, and then as I got closer to 40 and then turned 40, I'm like, like, it just hits you some, at one point, it hit me at one point. I'm like, 40 years old, and I'm like, I feel like the best parts of my life are still in front of me. Like, it's weird. So I was like, knowing, thinking back, my mom was only 40 when she had her accident. I'm like, well, shit, like, she probably was like, I still have a lot to live for. Like, 40 is not old. 40 is not old at all. Uh, but when you're 17, it seems kind of old, and you're like, like that would suck, you know, had she passed and what happened. But it really hits when you get to be that age. You're like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I've got kids who are, you know, going to graduate in a few years and learn to drive, and date, and have their hearts broken, and get married, and 
maybe yeah. some kids and all that stuff or whatever. So it, it, it you know, <clears throat> so I don't call my mom to remind her, hey, you almost died in 1995. I just let her know that I'm happy she's here. So it's she like you were talking about earlier about writing songs to try to say something in a more clever way, like you saying, you bringing up the 1995 thing is your clever way in to just let her know, hey, the message is, I love you and I'm glad you're here. Right. The the Hallmark card, just the front cover of it says, hey, remember that time? Yeah, right. Glad right. that didn't happen. Right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember when you uh, were almost killed by the patch of ice on the road? No, when she wasn't even driving, my sister was driving, but my mom took the front of it. Here's the loudest part. I hear the, like, the sweetest, saddest thing I've ever heard. So, I get a call. I have to call the basketball gymnasium down in Windham, Minnesota. I have to get a phone number for a payphone or something. Somebody answers. My dad's at the game. I have, and he, so they're at my mom's. This up. is like how tight knit, right. like, <laughs> small town Minnesota really is, this story. And this yeah. town is an hour away. I have to call and I said, listen to me, you have to go to the public address announcer. I need to get my dad on the phone right now. And the guy's like, got it. He goes to PA. I remember I keep blah, 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 my dad's like, shit. He knew right away. He's like, something bad happened. Because my mom and my sister should have been home by the time he went to the game an hour away. He the phone. I said, mom's been in an accident, blah, blah, blah. It was sleepy eye. We go in the snow that was causing the problems in the first place. I see my mom, they've already got her doped up. I'm paying, they're trying to fly her to Minneapolis, they can't fly her to Minneapolis. They take her in an ambulance. I'm 17, I, they take her and they go, and I turn to the, like, the sweet little nurse next to me, and I'm like, is she gonna fucking die? And then she's like, I just have to, you know, treat her and pray. So then, here's the sweet weird part. About five or six, maybe seven years later, my mom goes down to Florida, sees a cousin, comes back, and on the flight back, She's sitting next to this couple. I'll get choked up by this. She's sitting next to this couple. And so, you know, small talk on a plane, where are you from? Yeah. She says, where are you guys from? And they're like, well, we're from a really little town in southwestern Minnesota. And my mom's like, I'm from southwestern Minnesota, try me. She goes, the gal goes, well, we're from Clements, which is a town of 90 people. They're literally like 90 people in town. And my mom goes, well, I'm the mayor of Morgan at the time. So it was four years or less later because my mom was the mayor. Yeah, for, yeah, made that, in that range. My mom goes, I'm the mayor of Morgan. And they're like, oh. She's like, yeah, probably, probably. And then they said their names. I'm sorry, I don't know. They said their names. <clears throat> and my mom was just like, she goes, this is going to sound really weird. But you guys were the first people on the scene of my car accident March 4th, 1995. She was sitting right next to them on the airplane back from Florida. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Like, it's unreal, right? That, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was... There's a God. Explain that some other way. (laughs) Explain that some other way. So, my mom and my sister skated on the ice, turned across, they got T-bone on my mom's side. Yeah. And then the next people on the scene was too cool. Like, oh my God. That's wild. So... Anyway, yeah, I don't know. But in the vein of some of that, the, 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 the tone or the emotions of what you were just saying about life. This year has been a really interesting one for me so far because I've done a lot more this year than I think I've ever done, ever creatively, artistically, just producing things, just putting out an album and starting a podcast and right. doing this thing every Saturday night for like an entire year. And I'm only 38, like I'll be 39 in February, and I've been like looking at some of my heroes, and some of like their career arcs and things like that, and I've been looking at like, well where were they when they were my age? What, what, what did everything look like and, and thinking about how much I've watched them accomplish over like a decade span or something like that and as much as like you know I grew up in a family that taught me to want family and, and I'm just such a codependent person that like I'd rather be with somebody in my life to make me feel a little more balanced and fulfilled etc than just be doing life on my own but this last year 
especially today, being kind of a significant day. I mean, this this podcast will come out, you know, in, in a week or two. But today is July 20th, and I just released a film that I shot myself. I took a trip back to my old mission field back in Pennsylvania and shot a whole a film about it. And back to Berg. Back to Berg, yeah. And, and I, I'm astonished by how I feel physically at 38, that I feel, I mean, I'm a little tired and some of the joints are getting a little whatever, but I still feel kind of, you know, 22, like I, I don't feel too whatever, and I've got time in front of me, and now I'm kind of just like, what are my 40s going to be like? Like, right. what crazy shit right. am I going to do? I guarantee you I'll leave the country, and it's like, what does that mean? Where am I going to go? What am I going to see in this... I just got my passport the other day. I, I, I came in the mail and I was just like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, I have a... Pa- I could go anywhere. Like, the the shackles have just fallen off of me. And I'm kind of, like, bewildered and, and a little afraid yeah. of possibilities. I'm like, what? And I feel like where, where, I, where I want to get to oh, is, I'd guys? like to get to a yeah, place yeah. where I'm thinking, oh, I'm not this. from uh, what would everybody else think about this decision, or about this trip, or about this project, or whatever, and just start thinking, what do I want to do? What do I want to see? Who do I want to be? And what is where would I have to go? What would I have to experience to help me be that person? And even in relationships, like... I've, I've, just, I've been, you know, continuing to talk to this girl from Pennsylvania that I, like, reconnected with. And sincerely, I was in love with this girl before I met, like, my ex-wife. Like, this is, this is a very deep, old, nostalgic thing for me. And the fact that, like, the stuff that was there back then is still there, but we're both grown up and we've had life experiences since then, is really kind of fun. But I'm also just observing the way that, like, we treat each other and the way that just our little friendship functions and just thinking, and maybe this is where the codependence is kind of washing off me. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I need so much for this to be a relationship that I'm also not willing to be like, hey, here's some things that I'm noticing. Here's some things that I'm not getting that I, that I want. And to really, like, speak my peace, state my needs and and allow somebody to build them and if they don't be like okay cool why don't we go just Great. bomb off and find something that actually makes us happy then and just that I'm saying that out loud when, when did that happen when, when did I get so beat up by all these other experiences and I'm like yeah I'm done with getting the things that I want right yeah and so like I I, I goofily one time told Robin like so we're talking this will tie in, trust me. <laughs> read this poem on Facebook about like the last time things happened. Like the last time you read your kid a, a bedtime story. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like the last time your son kisses you before he goes to school or whatever. Stuff like that. Um, and then I said something about, you know, first, like, like how there aren't necessarily that many of them, necessarily or whatever. And like she thought it was like, like, Regretful that it wasn't gonna have like first so many so many firsts or whatever oh. like the ones that we experienced together and I, I don't want those firsts I don't want another first kiss you know or anything like that like she thought I was talking about that it was a little mis- mi- little miscommunication yeah um, so but then you realize all the other things that are gonna be first like because you know like you think about all those last especially at that time like Rob was really upset about it and I'm like well you know there are. A- there are last times that things are going to happen or whatever, you know. Um, but then there's so many other firsts that are still to come. And, like, um, I think we've actually done a really good job since then. I mean, that's a couple of years ago or whatever. But, like, when we were in Hawaii last month, we went snorkeling. Just snorkeling. Not scuba diving. Snorkeling. You know, I'd never done it. Probably never done it. Like, wildly fucking cool. Like, <laughs> you know, here's a load of fish and whatnot. Try not to scrape your knees on the coral. They're not supposed to stand up. <laughs> and then last weekend we went up to the up to Bartlett Lake with some friends and Robin rode on a tube behind the boat first time ever she was like what being pulled on a tube like she, they never went to the lake as kids and so like 
It, she seems like just the coolest, most like social and you know, well, she is awesome person. But yeah, she just never really got to the lake. Wow. And so like I was like I was so proud of her like the snorkeling thing. Yeah. She was nervous about it. Like she was almost like hyperventilating like in the shallow. Oh, water. because you have to really like yeah. get yeah. in a headspace and I can breathe. I can breathe. It's fine. Right. Yeah. And even I had a little trouble with it. But like once she got the hang of it, it was all over the place. It was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's super cool to see it. It's I mean, it's not the same as watching your kids do something for the first time, but, but like, you know, Robin is super cool and whatnot, but every now and then she just gets a little uncomfortable in her own skin, and yeah. she really has to fight to make it happen, but, she, yeah. but she'll but she fight. Yeah. She won't just, no, I can't do it or anything like that. And so, Which is so unique, to be brave, the older you get. Yeah. I feel like it's easy to get to be like, I've seen all I need to see, yeah, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not going to go jumping out of any airplanes anymore. Stop it. We need to. Why don't the three of us? I want to do it. Not a chance at all. Really? Yeah. Like, you're just that afraid of it? it yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. And if, do you, you don't think it would, like, evolve you as a human being to, like, just dive through that fear and see what happens? It would. But you I, don't, I'm you sure don't want to do it? You're work. good? The other, day, <laughs> the other day, we were working at the Eloy Airport. We went over to Circle K to grab some Gatorades. Yeah. And on the news I'm working at the Eloy Airport where they do the skydiving. Okay. The newspaper in several cases, instructor dies in tragic fall. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that, fuck that. And yeah, statistically, what's that? One of many thousands? Is that what happened? I, I prefer it to be many millions, but yeah, I don't know. I just don't do it. I, I, there, when I was younger, I thought it would, but like... Would you do it to support me? If I was just like, I'm doing it, and there's nobody else in this world that I would be emotionally <laughs> comfortable doing it with, then you, would you please help me conquer my fear and go do it? I'll push you out of the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'll laugh as you fall. Yeah, like, I'll be in the plane going up with you. And, and I'll be rooting for the parachute to come up. I need to. And the more, I, I've been thinking about it so deeply that I'm almost like, in that pre-dream space, I, I can I can get in a space where I can feel, I, I, I picture myself yeah. Like falling out of the plane and then just sort of that weightlessness. I, I need to. I need to. Like Will Smith has said things about it in public. Like it's such an important human experience to like throw your control to the wind like that. And just like gravity, like and hope this parachute and then like I have to. I have to. Do it. You know what I mean? No. What if I keep asking you about it for like months and months? So you're like, would you? <laughs> There's no way to break you down about it. I don't think so. Well, all right. Maybe, maybe to turn down the the challenge. Is there something you and I can can commit to do together that would be like some kind of thing you're afraid of doing? Repelling? I don't know. Maybe just not a heights thing. Maybe scuba diving. Maybe we could just. I mean, my I dad told me, like, it's pretty freaky to be down there. And I'm sure it is. Uh, I could probably scoot that. I, I, I would scoot that. Let's, just do, let's forget scuba diving, just the course. Because the course makes you, like, put on a tank and get in a, a deep, deep pool and stuff. Let's just do, let's just pass the training course. And just see. Can Robin do it with us? Yes! All right, Robin, you heard him. I'm so stoked. We gotta look into the energy dispenser. We'll figure it out. Um... So that, so now, to tie that all back, yeah. You know, I say dumb things for all the time. She's very patient. So, I mean, like Spider Man, that is super one. Like we were talking about that girl in Pennsylvania, is it's never, as long as I've been a brother, it's never been about a girl. Being her marriage with Robin did work because every marriage is not romantic, but it's not ever really about compromising. Well, there's compromise, but you never really compromise who you are. And and so, for the most part, it all should be kind of easy. I never, there's never been a time where I've ever even thought of telling Robin like. This is what I need because she knows what I need, and like, and she doesn't, she doesn't really tell me what she needs unless I've like really done something stupid to piss her off, and uh, and and that's how our relationship works. I'm more of the outspoken moron, and she's the level-headed, you know, <laughs> sexy beast. And so, so, uh, like, 
Yeah. You know, everybody's dated people before, and I know she dated people before she met me, and I dated people before she met me, before I met her. You know? yeah. But, like, all those, like, all those, like, that's, like, where you're like, this has to be, you know, like, you're trying so hard to make it work, and, like, you're a moron. Like, you just, you, you know, like, you just, <clears throat> you just can't, you just know. You just kind of know that there's no end, like, no, no, no good end, no good end at all. And, like, from the moment I met Robin, like, we were together for, like, a little bit. We went over to graduation from high school. Yeah. We came back. We did everything we could together. Fell in love. And then I went back to work with my dad for six months. And, and then I flew her up so she could drive back down here with me. And right when she walked around the corner in the airport, I was like, yeah, that's it. I was like, I'm going to marry her. Like, in there, two weeks later, we were engaged. We were only together for three, like, three and a half months. Uh, and we got engaged. Um, because it was never, never about, like, I need this to make me happy, blah, blah, blah. Because she knows. She just knows. And, and I'm pretty good, too. I, I do all right. Like, I told her this story a while back. My cousin and I worked together and loved my cousin to death, and he's been married a year longer than I have. And I went into Quick Trip on the way home from work. I got her a red, I got Robin a Red Bull. Like, I'm, it's like one in the afternoon, and Robin gets home at like 6 30. I buy Robin a Red Bull. And, and John's like, What's that? He's like, Red Bull. One for me, one for Robin. He's like, Did she tell you what she wanted a Red Bull? He's like, Nope. We didn't even talk to her. Because I know she likes Red Bull. Yeah. You know, it's just a, like, goofy little, simple, goofy little gesture to be like, I'm thinking about you at 1 o'clock when I'm on the way up to work. Bye, Red Bull. You know? So, like, little things like that are the things that make it easy to just kind of go along. And then, and that's, like, where the songs on the record kind of come from. Like, just, you know, to tie it back to the music, that's, that's kind of what we're doing here. That's exactly what we're doing here, yeah. It's, you know... I have a song, this one I mentioned earlier, it's called I Don't Know About You, and it's, it's like, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm lost, um, I don't know about things, where to buy, what they cost, but as long as I've got you, and those aren't the lyrics, the first part wasn't, yes. but as long as I've got you, I can feel it through life, and it's, it's all going to be okay. made enough unhealthy choices about my own relationships and I've chosen people who were just basically like gonna hurt me and there was no way they weren't gonna just do something that was just gonna damage me and it was like kind of like subconsciously intentional like I was trying to hurt myself by throwing this person at myself to hurt myself like I'm so scared of trusting anybody that completely that for me to like, I, I can find somebody and be happy with them and still probably take a good four or five years until I get to that point where I'm just like, oh, you're not leaving. You're not looking around. There's not anything else that you need more than what we have here. And then I can just kind of, oh, yeah. I don't, why? Why can't I just, like, want good things for myself and let that be a, I almost feel like that's what I'm hearing you say is that you, raised in a way where you were taught how to look for good things for yourself and so when you saw Robin it was just like good thing yeah. that I yeah. want that for me and then you, the reciprocation was natural right you just wanted to be what you saw in her for you for her yeah yeah. so you just are right well and and you know being the coach's kid and being picked on when I was little yeah and my mom almost dying in a car accident. Yeah. And coming in, moving out here when I was 19, like I had like a TV and a box, like a bag with some clothes on it, I had like nothing. And, and when I met Robin, it, it wasn't that I was like, I wasn't like trying to fall in love or, but like I didn't, I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. And I remember like 
my cousin was kind of concerned that Robert and I were moving too quickly, and I remember saying, like, when you've been looking for somebody since you were, you know, 13 years old, and you find her, you don't, you don't fuck around, and it's, you know, I know it's good, I know, and it's been, it's awesome, like, Robin is absolutely, I don't know, she's the reason I do anything, I mean, she's the reason I still write music, she tolerates the music really, really well, she likes the music better now that it isn't, you know, all about pregnant strippers, and, <laughs> you know, like, because all the songs are just dumb, jokey things, yeah. and, you know, I don't play, play uh, Playboy Mansion anymore, because she doesn't, she doesn't like it, it's, like, she's insulted by it, and I understand why, and I, if I, if I thought it was worth it at all, like, as a song, and at the expense of my relationship, I'd be like, no, I really want to fucking play it. I don't want to play it that goddamn bad. I've been, first of all, I've been playing it for... Sweet Christ, that truck was loud. That wasn't a train. <laughs> I, I literally jumped. So, so it's, it's not worth it uh, as a song. Yeah. I mean, especially just a suitable one thing. Um, but more importantly, obviously, because I'm not going to play it and run the risk of alienating my life. She's, she's the reason for everything. You she's know. a great person, yeah. I, I enjoy to be around her. And, uh, yeah, I, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I'm, you know, I'm not the kind of guy that toes lines or invades boundaries and things like that, but she's... She's just really easy to like. Yeah. So it's just really fun to just like get lost in like a conversation with her. And I guess now that I've been thinking about it, like it's never even like, you know, occurred to me. Like it, I've never been like drawn to flirt with her or anything. Like it's really, it's interesting how she. Should I be offended? Is incredible. And. Maybe what I'm saying is, I I'm not proud of the fact that I've been drawn into an affair in my life. That did some stuff with a very good friend of mine's wife. Oh, good. wasn't wasn't a good idea. It really messed up our friendship and messed up all of our lives. But so I I, I know what it looks like when somebody's throwing some rhythm and stuff like that. And being single, I'm just dangerous most of the time for stuff like that because I'm codependent, so I just I play along and see what I can get and stuff. But Robin's like so fun and so loose and so um, just sociable and sweet and fun and nice. And I just feel so like comfortable. Like I could talk to her about anything, and I don't feel like I need to watch out. It's yeah. almost like there's people like her, there's people like you that are already watching out. Like you're already, you've got your boundaries set, you, and you've got your life the way it is. To the point that people like me don't even need to worry about people like the two of you because you're just <laughs> your your life is so complete that. Even if I make like a, 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 a an off color joke around her, she's kind enough to laugh at it. And if it's not her thing, like she just won't give it any extra space. And then I can feel that social message, and I'll just like yeah. change the subject, and we just move. Like she, I don't know. I, maybe, I'm just, <laughs> maybe what I'm saying is I'm I'm fascinated by the fact that like. Well, one you. I love see. hanging out with your wife in the very few times that we ever been able to hang out together, but I don't. The, the like the draws that I have, the addictions that I have, and all the crazy thoughts that I think. I think romantic thoughts about most of the women that I know. Right. Most of them. Married or not. I don't care if they have some sort of like sexual or whatever thought. I'm just into that. And I, I don't know why. <laughs> she's like she's gorgeous and awesome, stunning. but maybe it's because what you guys have is so fucking sweet and pure and I don't know. If I were a total dick, you'd probably be more inclined. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But, I mean, no, I'm being serious. Like, it's almost that, like, that Beatles song on, uh, uh, Rubber Soul, the You're Gonna Lose That Girl. Yeah. 
there's nothing about you that would ever make me like think those thoughts toward you. Where you're just like, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're pissing her off. She's 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 so. Even the things about you that maybe she's not a huge fan of, maybe like your music or just whatever, like she's just like meh about it. She's a fan of you, yeah. and it's just so fun. And it makes single people like me like jealous. Yeah. Just like right. damn, did you do that? And to your point, you didn't. Yeah. You were just there. Yeah. You just saw her, and you were like, "Yep, that please." I lit her cigarette. I lit her cigarette. Did it. you really? That's yeah. so hot. And she was hanging out with somebody I didn't really know that well or like that much. <laughs> and so I waited, and then, like later in the evening, she was getting hit out by some dude at the bar, and like kind of cracked a joke. Like, yeah, yeah, why not? She like grabbed my arms, like, "Don't leave." Me. And so and you're like 30 years later, I never yeah, did. Never. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, um, no, like, like I said, you've seen the things that can happen in situations like that. Yeah. And, uh, so to tie that all up, it's hard work. It's you have to work hard to have a relationship. There's always give and take, and there are bumps in the roads, and there are you know there are good times, there are bad times, obviously. Uh, I mean, obviously there are both if you're going to go through things, but it's it's hard work that you don't have to work hard at, and that's how I kind of look at it. So, you know, every day, every day I try and, you know, I, you know, Robin, best part of her, she's like, she's, she's funny as shit, like, she lets me just be a dumb shit sometimes. Um, <laughs> she, she doesn't, like, um go over your comedy routines with you and, and she doesn't like punch up your well yeah your and conversations and yeah, stuff yeah like she just lets you be you yeah uh, she, she tolerates some of the dumb things I do but it's like a <laughs> like these funny little traditions that we have um, but like a couple months ago we were going to my uncle's birthday party and she's like so we watched NASCAR like we've talked about that and um, so we're, we're following each other to the state 48 where my cousin works and she's like where the hell did you go did you get caught in lap Lap traffic, <laughs> and like, and I was just like, I laughed my ass off. I said, "Sweetheart," I said, "It is fucking awesome to me that you're the most amazing wife. You're fucking gorgeous, and you refer to the other cars on the road as lap traffic because you know it's gonna make me smile. Like that, yeah, and that's she's so quick and so smart. Yeah, she's just paying attention, and she'll tell you that she's not. She's like, I'm not. She just gets a little uncomfortable around new people, so like that's what actually makes her so so welcoming and comfortable around you. Because she's only a long time. Yeah, so. I need to get on the podcast now. That, I just feel like now we've done it. We pushed it so far that it's like, well, now people have to understand who we're talking about. Yeah, we've turned this whole thing into talking about my wife, but I could. I should just get you I two to work. talk, and I'll just like post it as an episode of just you two talking to each oh other. You God. can introduce the world to Robin. Yeah, she's, she's so good. Well, since uh, we've been talking about the album, or, or at least trying to keep this thing to the album, um, what, I feel like I saw the title of it on your phone. It made me laugh, but I didn't see the whole thing. What is this album called? I think I'm going to name it The Hunter, and then a colon, I'm All Ears, or The Greatest uh, the greatest Record You've Never Heard. And this is going to be the So, okay. like 2001, colon, Space Odyssey, or How Other Relax, I Love the Bomb. <laughs> so it's The Hunter. Yeah. Uh, and I'm all ears and I'm get a picture of my bass and I'm with her ears out and I'll probably wear it in his hat. That's so fun. Right? And then, or the greatest rock, uh, the greatest record you've never heard because nobody's going to hear it. Like I said, the cream rises to the top. So nobody's going to hear it. I'm going to put it on iTunes and nobody's going to hear it. I feel like what I'll try to do with this podcast is I think I'm going to drop it the Monday before the show yep. so that we could even say right now, August 9th, Friday, August 9th. Friday, August 9th. The, at Pub Rock in uh, Tempe, Arizona. Scott Sailor, Arizona. Um, so if you're in Arizona, get tickets and go. If you're not, I'm sure we'll put videos or something on the internet at some point. However, the album should be available by the, the, the dropping of this, yes. this podcast. Yes. So, Idiot Kin, all one word, Idiot, I-D-I-O-T-K-I-N, duh, <laughs> there was a reason, um, on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, you name it, wherever you get music, check it out. Yep. Um, what I've heard of the finished cut, so fun. So, just a really fun, 
pumping kind of practice. And I love you, dude. Love you, too. Every time you come, every time you play, every time you invite me to a show, like, to play, like, every time you book me on a show, part of me is like, I enjoy what I do. I like playing, so you come and play. Part of me is just like, it's a night out with Ross. I get to, like, have a good time with Ross. So, I love it. I hope you get to keep doing that for decades to come. Old man or acoustics. Oh, yeah. No, I hope it happens too. I, uh, I wish I were a little bit better at it. But, uh, it's always fun to have you. It's always good to talk to you. And it's, uh, we'll, get, we'll get together with Rob and you can. So fun. Oh, I can't wait. She's good. Uh, we'll probably do this like once a year too. You're just going to be like a yearly recurring guest on this podcast. I'll, I'll interview you, you next time. Oh, yeah. We can do that. Alright, dude. Love your face. Love you. <laughs> we'll see you again.